In September 2020, Vanguard launched a new ETF that has generated a lot of buzz, the Vanguard Retirement Income ETF Portfolio with ticker symbol VRIF. Like other asset allocation ETFs, including the popular VBAL and VGRO, this new fund is built from several underlying ETFs covering the global stock and bond markets. But while VBAL and VGRO are designed for people accumulating wealth, VRIF is aimed at investors who are drawing down their portfolio to meet their regular expenses. I'm Justin Bender, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of the Canadian Portfolio Manager, I'll explain how this new Vanguard ETF works and help you decide whether it deserves a place in your portfolio. The most important feature of VRIF is its consistent monthly payout which has a target of 4% annually. Here's how it works. VRIF launched with a unit price of $25, so that 4% yield works out to a tidy $1 annually. Since the payouts are monthly, that $1 gets divided by 12, which is a not so tidy $0.083333 per unit each month. So if you buy 12,000 units worth about $300,000 at the current price, you can expect a monthly distribution of $1,000. VRIF's distribution will be adjusted every year to make sure it hits that 4% target. The original amount was based on a unit price of $25, but future payouts will be tweaked according to the fund's price at the end of each calendar year. For example, if the fund's unit price has declined to $24.50 at the end of 2020, the 4% distribution will be recalculated at 0.98, and the 12 monthly distributions for 2021 will be $0.0817 per unit. If the unit price is climbed to $25.50, then the annual 4% yield works out to $1.02, or $0.085 a month. Because VRIF's unit holders will be looking for consistent cash flow, Vanguard will cap these annual changes at 5% in either direction. So if you're receiving $1,000 a month in income today, you can be confident that next year, your monthly distribution will be between $950 and $1,050. So is VRIF a game changer for index investors in retirement? Well, the ETF has some novel features, but it's not a fundamentally new idea. VRIF is just the latest example of a monthly income fund, which has been a staple in the mutual fund industry for a generation. These are balanced funds containing a mix of stocks and bonds that pay a consistent cash distribution each month. They appeal to investors who want steady cash flow, such as retirees. Monthly income funds are hugely popular. All of the big banks and major fund providers offer them. There are even a number of monthly income ETFs available. But even if VRIF isn't unique, it sets itself apart from its competitors in a couple of important ways. The first is low cost. The ETF's management fee is 0.29%, which should translate to an MER of about 0.32% once you include taxes. It's not unusual for bank-sponsored monthly income mutual funds to come in around 1.5%. Even monthly income ETFs can have fees two to three times higher than VRIFs. VRIF also promises better diversification. Not surprisingly, monthly income funds tend to load up on dividend-paying stocks and preferred shares. Many also significantly overweight homegrown equities. Put those two things together, and you can end up with a portfolio full of Canadian banks. You won't find that problem with VRIF. As we've said, the fund holds eight underlying ETFs, four for stocks and four for bonds, with an even 50-50% split between equities and fixed income. Here's what the breakdown looks like. A few things to note here. First, VRIF largely uses the same building blocks you'll find in Vanguard's other asset allocation ETFs. As a comparison, we've used a 50-50 split of VBAL and VCNS, as this provides us with the same 50-50 stock bond asset mix as VRIF. The four equity holdings are broad market ETFs covering Canadian, US, international developed, and emerging markets. Although Vanguard has a family of dividend ETFs it could have used to build VRIF, they have not tilted the portfolio toward high yield stocks. Second, there's less home country bias here. With just 9% in Canadian stocks, VRIF's mix is actually less skewed to Canada than Vanguard's other asset allocation ETFs. Third, the international developed markets equity weighting in VRIF is more than double that of our VCNS VBAL combo. 
we do need to call it one big difference in BRIS fixed income holdings. The fund's single largest holding is the Vanguard Canadian Corporate Bond Index ETF, VCB, which is completely absent from Vanguard's other asset allocation ETFs. Here at least, Vanguard has decided to take a little added risk in order to get more income from corporate bonds. One final note about the asset mix in VRIF. It won't stay constant. Unlike VBAL or VCNS, which have relatively stable allocations, the managers of VRIF have given themselves a lot of leeway. Based on valuations and long-term expected returns, they plan to adjust VRIF's asset allocation from time to time. The overall equity share could get as high as 60%, or as low as 30%. Does this make VRIF an actively managed fund? Well, that's up to you to decide. It's certainly more tactical than VBAL or VCNS. Okay, now that you understand how VRIF works, it's time to consider how it might fit into your investment plan. With retirement income right in its name, it's natural to consider using Vanguard's new ETF in a RIF account. RIFs, of course, require you to make regular withdrawals and many retirees receive these monthly. Since investors tend to dislike selling holdings to free up cash for those regular withdrawals, VRIF's monthly distribution schedule might be just the ticket. But if you already have a RIF, you've probably spotted the wrinkle. VRIF's annual distribution is fixed at 4%, and unless you're 65 or younger, the minimum withdrawal rate from a RIF is higher than that. Say you're 72 at the start of the year, and your RIF holds 12,000 units of VRIF with a value of $300,000. At your age, the minimum withdrawal for the year is 5.4% of that balance, which is $16,200, or $1,350 per month. However, the distribution from VRIF will be $1,000 a month, so you'll need to find a way to make up that shortfall. Of course, you could simply sell units of VRIF to free up $350 a month, but this is inefficient, inconvenient, and doesn't help retirees overcome their reluctance to sell holdings to generate income. Really, it defeats the purpose of using a monthly income fund. If you are resigned to selling units frequently, why not just stick with whatever ETF portfolio you are using in your RSP before you converted it to a RIF? VRIF is more useful for income-oriented investors who hold it in a taxable account. Unlike with a RIF, you won't have to worry about minimum withdrawals, so you can simply arrange with your brokerage to have the monthly distributions sent to your checking account and let the investments run on autopilot. No one can argue with that convenience. Now, let's consider some situations where monthly income ETFs are really inappropriate. First off, VRIF is absolutely not a substitute for high interest savings accounts, GICs, or even bonds. VRIF's 4% distribution is not the same as a 4% return. Like any portfolio of stocks and bonds, this ETF can easily lose money over short periods, so it's not the place to stash your emergency savings or the down payment on your home purchase. Other investors wonder whether VRIF would be appropriate for someone making regular contributions to their portfolio, as opposed to drawing it down. Since these folks don't need monthly cash flow, they suggest setting up a drip and reinvesting all of the distributions. We would argue that such a strategy makes little sense. Since there are already excellent one-ticket balanced ETFs available for accumulators, it's hard to understand why anyone would use a monthly income fund for this purpose. A significant amount of BRIF's distributions will come from capital gains, which means the fund manager will regularly sell securities to harvest these gains. This isn't a sensible strategy for investors who are planning to reinvest the proceeds. Think of it like this. If you held VBAL or VGRO instead, would you periodically sell shares to realize gains and then immediately repurchase them? Of course not. But that's effectively what you'd be doing if you used VRIF with a dividend reinvestment plan. So if you're in the accumulation phase of your investing life, stick to traditional ETFs. There's no benefit to using a fund that generates regular cash flow if you're just going to reinvest the payouts. But if you rely on regular withdrawals from your portfolio to fund your spending, then VRIF, with its thoughtful design, low cost, and broad diversification, can be a simple, sustainable solution. Thanks for watching. I'm Justin Bender of PWL Capital, and this is the Canadian Portfolio Manager YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click subscribe. And if you want to learn more about VRIF, head over to the Canadian Couch Potato blog, where my colleague Dan Bordelotti has written a four part series that takes an even more in depth look at this ETF.